It's an offer to make a nice sir. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah. <clears throat> Good evening, Council. Yes. Now the time is 6 or 1. Let me call to order the special meeting of the Town Council of Town of Sandyville for Monday. October 14, 2019. For the record, all council members except Mr. Clark and Mr. Freeman are absent. We anticipate uh, Mr. Clark to join us shortly here. We're all here except for Clark and Freeman, right? I think yes, right. they were all absent. Okay, I'll repeat again. <laughs> all council members are present except Mr. Freeman and Mr. Clark, and we fully anticipate Mr. Clark to join us shortly. Um, Council, we have one item on the agenda, that is to interview candidates to fill vacancies on the Town's Planning and Zoning Commission. Uh, for Mr. Wade and Mr. Peek, and uh, we went ahead and uh, appointed for the Library Board and Board of Adjustments last week, or last time we met. And as we know, 4 and 4 will be holding up for uh, uh, at least until November. So <coughs> for the PNC, we had um, we have Mr. Uh, Giordano <clears throat> and Mr. Gold are applied for it, or uh, interviewed with us. And I think we have a couple more of our applicants. So, so, and Mr. Daniel has requested to be appointed as a regular member. Uh, and I know she had questions, so I'll address that when she gets here. <clears throat> so at least uh, council felt that perhaps it's good to uh, have an opportunity to ask a few more questions, so so we are inviting her to be here today. With that, Rachel, do you have anything else to add? Um, and so just to kind of fill you two in that weren't here, Mr. <coughs> Kilgore um, is still interested, however, he would not be available for an interview until like the 1st of November, and he understood that it was probably not possible to wait that long. Um, Mr. Troy was supposed, or Childers was supposed to be here tonight. He also had something come up for work, so it would be November as well for him. And he was also understandable that we may not be able to wait that long. Yeah. So then that leaves us with Miss Daniel tonight. <coughs> of the, some of them said they did not want to be alternates from the last meetings. So like I think Michael mm -hmm. indicated he did not want to be considered as an alternate position. And did. And, and I think James did as well. <coughs> yes. And I think in... <coughs> so we have one position open. Mm -hmm. I think Ken Demko is tempted to doubt. We don't... Uh, we don't have anyone to reappoint this time, correct? Yes, where we, we would you would need to reappoint Don okay, Klein. I'm sorry, you're right. Reappoint if you choose to Don Klein, John Peace, Sarah Mitchell, King Moss, and Shiny Daniel. All five are due for the due, due for reappointment if the council chooses to do so. So let me ask you. So since Demko was the uh, chairman of the PNC, does the council appoint the chairman? I think the council only appoints the chair of DOA. Is that right? Mm -hmm. It's the, the chair for PNC is elected by the members of the PNC. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> cool. Is that by charter or is that by... Um, it's just by the way it's been done. Bylaw maybe? Yeah. 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 By yeah. Yeah. I, don't, I never saw any bylaws for yeah, PNC in any of the work that I've done. Mm -hmm. I it's I was like the creation ordinance. ordinance. Yeah, I think it's in the creation ordinance. But so the standard fare... For PMZ, wouldn't change it. I don't think no, we need to. <laughs> the standard fare for PMZ ever since I've been involved in, before I was involved, has typically been the election by uh, the other members because the other members have a better idea of the types of individuals that sit than somebody that's been on the outside. Do y'all want me to see if that's Kevin, and then if not, do y'all want to go and start? <clears throat> Just give us a couple more minutes. Okay. I'm going to be here if you can.
<coughs> Mayor, if we wanted to clarify uh, those that are alternates and their moves to permanence, such as re uh, <coughs> reapplying or assuming that that's an automatic deal, how do we how do we go about making that change? Say one more time. <coughs> if you're an alternate, right, and you want to automatically be renewed as a permanent. <coughs> It doesn't appear like we have a procedure in place that does that. It seems more like it's either assumed or not assumed. Should we reach a point at some time where we clarify that, meaning they either have to apply or we change our procedures <coughs> to say that's the intent? It's a question. I don't know. Having been in that role before, I didn't have a problem with being an alternate. And I think it's very valuable to be an alternate because you get a gist of what's going on. So it was probably two years before I went on being permanent. Now, I will say that I threw a little bit of a hissy fit about it because there were three people sitting up there that were not doing anything. They were just listening and not doing anything. And uh, I told the mayor at the time, I said, I got too many other things to be doing just to sit out here and know that I could be a part of what's going on. It's just my perspective. Y'all change it so you said, you said, much so, I don't I, I think, I think the question is, if you're an alternate and you want to go to a permanent status, we don't really have anything in, in, in place that says it's an automatic or that you have to apply or that anything happens because unless I've missed something, we either do or we don't. In other words, the question may be, if I really understand, how, do we, how does one person go from an alternate to regular? Is that the question? You can ask it that way. Yes. If, if it was done typically by, if you came in as an alternate and there was a position that became open, you went into a permanent position. But there's All nothing right. that says that. No, there's not. And this isn't, I mean, I was going to say this in the government, but... I know the government, but it is government. I think the assumption for, for some people that it's going to be that way, but we could have four or five people come in and go, wow, these, these people need to be on there making the decision. <clears throat> maybe, to your point, maybe more so than some of the people that are on there. So do we automatically just bypass or do we, or well, do you, we become proactive and say, no, these people really need to be on there. You can, say the, there. you can say the same thing to reverse them, which is what the first time I'd ever heard of anybody being reverse, reverse which is what we do for to, to Shiny because she wasn't showing up at meetings. But that one's a more clean cut reason for a demotion sure. than it was a promotion, although it stands to reason that people who work hard should be given that opportunity to move up, particularly when there's People who are term limiting hey, out, particularly whereas people that are term limiting out, or more importantly, the council recognizes that there's people that are just sitting up here because they like to sit and see. So, point of clarification on the statement you made, Martin, which I did not know, mm -hmm. was Shiny a full time member and then she was demoted to uh, alternate, uh, alternate because of attendance. Yep. Okay. So, there was a family illness or something. Well, <clears throat> For whatever reason, she I'm not going to just. Realize. Yeah, I, I, I think you got to put okay. that out of the picture because you. you know it's like if you or any one of us were to hit in a train wreck and you know hit in a car wreck tonight, God forbid that, that that would happen to one of us. The town keeps moving, so the things that need to happen in a business, if the president of the company gets you know dies in a plane crash, the company has to keep moving, and that's the perspective that we I think we need to always take at it as uh, just that, regardless. I feel for the, the the social side of it, but the town keeps moving. I, I can tell you that, like in other situations that I've seen, is when you're appointed as an alternate, that's the seat you're appointed to, and you you stay in that seat for whatever term you have, and then at the end of the term, if there's an opening, you can apply to be in the new seat. But it is an application. I mean, I'm just sharing what I've seen before, not that it's right or wrong. Yeah, typically what happens is, just because we have a low number of people who like to be a part of it, is the alternate never really serves out the full time of an alternate. You get moved up because somebody term limits out and goes off. And that just so happens Right now, it looks like we've got a, a big batch. When I went off of PNC, a majority of PNG stayed, and they're still there. So you're saying though that they wouldn't, would the onus wouldn't be on them to apply for their full time? You just assume it and move them up. I think. Okay. Yeah, I think we should. I think that 
why wouldn't we have somebody? If we had a, we had a large pool of applicants, why wouldn't we have? What's the, what would be the negative in us having the application process kind of like we've done this time? If we have a lot of qualified candidates and the person was appointed as an alternate, regardless of who, and they want to move into a full time, why wouldn't we say that if you want to do that, you need to let us know you're going to do that and go through this process just like we would with the other applicants? Because there might be a stronger candidate that serves the town better through that process. I mean, the goal is to have the best people on the committee, right, is to, to serve the town. I, I wouldn't argue with that, except for the fact that um, I don't want to put somebody out to pasture unless there's a purposeful reason for putting them out to pasture, which it's... But they can stay as an alternate. Well, which is basically what we did with China. Yeah, yeah they could stay as an alternate. Yeah. It's not saying we, you're out. We but now, now what we have to do is we've got to look at participation to be able to measure that. We might have a perceived value that that individual would be better than somebody who's sitting up there. But how do you measure that to know that they are better? Through, than the, a, through the interview process. <clears throat> well, but interview process is one. You can interview good and be crappy at your job. Yeah, you can, can interview bad and be excellent at your but job. But I can talk to them about their experience and what why they think they would be. I'm, just saying it's, I'm not saying it's holistically would be decided, but I think mm -hmm. it's part of the process. I would say there needs to be a process behind it instead of an automatic, is what but I would have. I think for. that's my point. The point is we don't really have a defined Yeah, we don't have a process. Process to go from no, it. Don't. It could be or could not be. And to your point, if, if six people walked in next year that were incredibly qualified and already involved in the town, and we said, oh, no, we can't do that because we automatically going to move people up, then the question is, that, to, in my mind, is that the right thing to do? I agree. And, that, and that's not relevant to anything that takes take place tonight. I'm just... Your service should account for a lot of what they've already done. I, I don't, I'm not discounting that. And yeah, and, and the, well, the other thing is, is, again, over the years, historically, we have trouble getting enough people. Yeah, I agree. Right. And if we're having a better success rate at getting enough people, because, again, you don't want to say, well, we're going to drop you down to alternate because we've got somebody else we think is, I don't know what your reason or your logic is to be able to say we're dropping you down to alternate, but to some people it'd be like, hmm, okay, well, I'll just... Yeah, it, it, and to be real clear, I'm not talking about dropping anybody out, I was talking about from, a, from an alternate to that position. Mm -hmm. There's nothing that says it's automatic, that you have to apply, it's just assume you're going to move me up. Should we build a policy that says if you want to move from an alternate to the board position, you should be reapplied in an interview because there could be seven or eight other people that come in to do the same well, thing. There, it could be good. No. <coughs> I'm not going to argue with that. And there's always yep, and some people the interview process. Some people don't want to be moved up. You know, they're only willing to serve at that level. So, I mean, I do think there's a question, like a, and that's why normally you'd put the onus on them to initiate it if they so chose. But we need to tell them that mm -hmm. the onus is on them. I think is that your point? Yeah, that's pretty much. That's yeah. my point. Is yeah, that. we just don't have a process. We're I mean, we do that. So we use reuse the same email to our boards yeah. every year, so we can just add something yeah. in there. That's I mean, I had to serving as an alternate would even like to be considered was, to move up into a full position. You should one be available? Even I was. Even though I've been chair for four years, I had to re-up because there's the cycle that you yeah. fall into right. that right. you had to re-up. They could have said, "Well, no, we don't want you to be." We don't want you to be sitting anymore. They could not pick. We don't want you to be chair because that that selection was done off of the off the commission. But we don't want you to sit anymore. We want you to be alternate. That didn't happen. Now it could have happened, and we would have seen what the possible results were. But. In the past, we have your know, markers for hard time getting people to apply. But maybe the now that we have the volume, the overall participation level in town has changed. We have good number of good candidates this year, which is good. But I think staff does the extra work of reaching out to each other and asking, do you want to continue, do you want to stay, or do you want to reappoint it? But your point is, is, is a good one. Should that be added as a requirement in the application? Do you want to be considered? Like so we think. already email you know, the ones that are up for reappointment and ask them, right. and we could just make that part of the process by asking the alternates as well. So there was a question last week, and I'm going to kill a little bit of time here. I didn't, I didn't mean to drag you. No, no, it's like I want, I want, you did you already reach out to him? I did. Okay. Uh, if I'm not meant to be, then we'll move on here. We only have one applicant here, right? Mm -hmm. So in the past, um, if I remember correctly, I think we got, Leslie, you, you can tell me, one time at least we got everyone to come back to interview with us. 
Is that right? Mm -hmm. Do you remember that one? Even those that were up for just yeah, up for that was just, hey, we want to yeah. have the same process and we done it. I think it was a bit too much. So I think the council sure. next day went back and said, no, let's just do it. That's the SOG. That's the gym? I'm sorry? Do you want to say anything? You know, I think the greatest <clears throat> pitfall of this is it's presumed that you have an eight-year term. Hmm. Yep. I mean, I'm looking at these, and it's been that problem before. I mean, we don't serve those kinds of terms, but, you know, we're appointing people four-year terms, and it's kind of presumed that you get another four-year term. And, uh, you know, I, I think that's wrong. Uh, it should not be. I don't know as I have a problem with any of these folks. Right, right. But, I mean, I look at the people that are serving out to 2025 and 2026, and it's like, you know, they may not have a vision for Sunnyvale that jives with this council. Or the next council. Or the council. Or the next yeah. council or the next council. So but the they're going to serve through about two or three councils, and it's presumed that they're, uh, they're, they're, they're sitting here. We don't even we don't interview them again. Is that where they get turned out? Well, they get turned out after eight years. But I mean, uh, you know, I'm not sure that everybody ought not to be interviewed. And, you know, why should you continue? And what evaluation can you give? Because that's where we have the opportunity to say, Mr. ABC, you know, two or three of us have a problem with it. And we'd like to bring in XYZ. And you don't have, and you're. You can either shift down to an alternate, or maybe you can shift completely off. Well, yeah. I, you know, I don't want to be ugly. Right, right. But right. we're I don't be a point for that long. I'm sorry. So, so, so let me let me. It's two. two. Yeah. And then two they turn out four year terms. No. Two year terms. Two year terms. But they can go up to every other right? Every two they years. Right. The term limit is eight. How many can you have? Four. Four. Four terms. Four terms. Yes. Yes. So, so remember, Jim. We had six I think, before six or four. We changed them because they couldn't find the candidates. So maybe the situation changed. Maybe it's time to relook at it. I'm inclined to say that. Okay. Really, I'm inclined to say that whether you are at the end of your term or not, that yearly we bring them in because that's the only time you have a chance to to review the absences. Maybe review the. The fact that you're always disruptive, you know, there's never the one problem I always had with PMZ is there was never any feedback from council as to where we were going, were we looking right, were we looking left, why they chose to to go a different way than and override the decision by PMZ because when you override when you overrode that group, I took it personally, and I, maybe I shouldn't have, but well, I took it personally fair. because. I'm going like, well, what did, what did we do wrong? We worked hard at this for two hours. And then you guys, in five minutes, flip it. So let's take, take that point for a second, okay? So if you look at it, <coughs> Anthony Okafor got appointed in 2014 originally. He will be, he's five, five years, he's, he's ready, he is, uh, he is due for reappointment 2020. Yes, he's in, his, he's in his third term. That's correct. And got one more to go. Right. Mm -hmm. And Don Klein was appointed. Don Klein, George Sandler, King Moss, and Shiny Daniel got appointed in 2015. But Don was an alternate to begin with. Yeah. And got I, moved on. Don, I, I don't, maybe, yeah, probably. But I'm saying they were originally appointed. <clears throat> then John Pease got appointed in 2013. So he's been here for one. Six years going into the seventh year now. And uh, Sarah Mitchell got appointed in 2016. It's hard to get people to, to come in and serve when they're going to be here for eight years. It's hard to get other people to come in. I'm not, I'm, and I'm not, this is not about anybody on this list. It's just about, it was just a question. It should your term expire in, right. in any capacity, in any term. Should you be required to reapply, and then you could be appointed for another term right. up to that max that you have, versus just assuming, oh, well, you're in. Because but you don't have to serve the eight years. You don't have to even serve right. the two years. Right. The right. one of the alternate is there. So the, the commitment requirement has got some flexibility. So let me, let me pull on that thread, since you brought that up twice now, right? Can them go? He's turned out. Don Klein, John Peace. Sarah Mitchell, King Moss, and Shiny Daniel, five of them are due for reappointment. 
is that they set up the council to bring all five back before we reappoint them. I think my opinion would be that we need to establish a guidelines for ourselves before we just shotgun pull people back. So I'd like to see us. I, 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 just, I like what you're saying, Jim. And I think we need to come together and form a policy as to what this looks like instead of us just shotgunning this thing forward. If we decide we want to change the process because we need to make sure we effectively communicate what our expectations are moving forward for this process if we decide to change it. should be consistent with the process. Absolutely. No matter Absolutely. what, right? If That's why I don't think we should shotgun it. I think we okay. should, should say, okay, for this time we're going to, if we decide to reappoint these people, that's fine. But I don't think we should change the process without us, number one, really talking about and vetting out, and number two, communicating it effectively. And you also you have already yes. started, yeah. No, it is. It's a process. Right. Right. And, and I, and I agree. Whatever it is. Just, just look at this, for instance, when there's nobody who turns out next year. Okay. And nobody turns out in 22, but four people go out in 23. Again, no, why is the reason? The Oka for a term. One time, no more. for a term. Behind. Nobody he, he, he is. Why? He is. Yeah, there was a reason behind it, right? But oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not agreeing. Yeah. You're, 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 you're just looking at term outs, not, <coughs> not the up for reappointments. Oh, right? I know. But the term out is where we are, unless something is clarified. And I think that would clarified. be a good workshop, I think, for us to yeah. really sit down and look at our all, holistically our boards and commissions and say, how do we want to do this moving forward? It must have just wasn't to change something at night for everything we're doing. But to start looking at it and say, hey, is there another way to do it? I think we have to get a policy, but it's too late this year. Yeah. No, it is. Right, too, right, I agree with right, you, Jim. It's right. too late no. this year to do that. Okay. Can we leave that open? Okay. Leave it open. Leave it open. But open. now it's 622, Mr. Clark. But I think we also have to look at how we treat alternates. Because in this decision, in my opinion, is pretty critical with that. If, if, if I move an alternate up this time, then I put a very, very well qualified person as an alternate. And I'm sure I want to do that. Well, and, and, and our I, reasons are not necessarily because of. We need to I'm looking at other. Intangibles. Right. right. Can we can we get a candidate? We can come to discuss now from the event up. Good evening. Forty six. Good evening. Thirty seven more minutes after. It just went up. <clears throat> You said it earlier. So mm -hmm. Going to QT for dinner. <laughs> going to QT for dinner? You're going to QT for dinner, Kevin? What? You're going to QT for dinner? No. There's food in there. Excellent. Oh, that's what the. That's what the text said. I didn't guess. Good to see you. Hey, Shani. How are you? Good to see you. I was nervous I wouldn't get here. Good to see you. 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 Shani, thanks for uh, being here. Uh, I know you had some questions to Rachel and told her genuine question why why you are called to come back is it a standard process the answer is that it's not always the case but this year we had two other um, candidates who have served in different capacity than PMCs one served in BOA one served in OJ but we be the town for a while and they both expressed the interest to be appointed as a regular member we interviewed both of them last week and we heard that you applied to be appointed as a regular member. So uh, it's really fair that uh, council get to ask you questions and, and, and just like they ask the question that are for us. Just to let you know why, at least I you asked the question, Rachel, I want to make sure that at least we can explain that to you. Mm -hmm. With that, I know you are, uh, you are a regular member, you've been an uh, alternate member and attendance wise, you had a perfect attendance last year, uh, you know, noted that. Uh, can you talk to us about why you want to be a regular member of Columbia? Sure. Um, first of all, I've, I've spent four years in this capacity, and uh, not only do I have that experience, but in addition to that, my daily work is reading regulations and applying them. I've got a law degree, and I've been in business 25 years doing uh, exactly that, you know, understanding and reading complex laws. And um, other, uh, helping other people uh, apply those. So 
I feel that a lot of what we do is read regulations and and uh, make sure that it applies properly to our town. Councilor question on this down yet. So Shani, thank you, number one, for your service. I appreciate that. Volunteer services. Honestly, I highly value that myself, so I appreciate that. Um, you know, one of the things that <coughs> and for the council as I've come to look at it is to make sure we're on the same page as far as how things flow and kind of our vision for the town. And so, um, you know, PNC's kind of that first stop for these developers that want to come in and bring new development things to our town. And so how do you see, um, how do you see that the role has been of PNZ, like since you've been on there, do you think there's been alignment with the council? Do you think there's been? I think more or less there has been alignment with the council um, there are some things that are overturned sure. uh, some decisions that are sent back once it reaches the council level so but in general i think pnz and council have been in, st in step with each other okay, okay. good well, i'm just curious from the inside how that yeah. works for you um follow-up question of that is you've obviously been involved here a long time and have a lot of investment in this town and you have a lot of personal investment in this town as far as with property and things like that. Some things that could come before a zoning request and before a PNC. How do you see your role as somebody who is really personally invested through your businesses and things like that, and then your decision making authority on how that would, how, do you, how would you see that playing out for yourself personally? So, in the four years, there have only been two instances where anything remotely related to me came up. and I. Uh, I withdrew myself from those you two occasions. Mm -hmm. There are actually other <coughs> PNC members who have had to recuse themselves multiple times because of being a law firm or something like that, where there's a, uh, there's some relation. And by law, you're supposed to remove yourself, or by ethics. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's how you see it. Is you just if something came up, you like right. that's it, what you would do. Is absolutely. Just, and as I said, over the four years, only a couple of times, couple of times. come up. Yeah. yeah. Good. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. I guess we have questions from Ms. Daniel. Do you have any, anything else? Did I miss anybody? Okay. Do you have any questions for us? I really don't. Uh, I was happy to serve. and. Um, just as an explanation of why I was not in that regular uh, position, continuing from when I started in 2015, um, my dad had uh, suddenly been diagnosed with uh, a very aggressive uh, cancer, and I moved into my house, and um, so a lot of his chemo was on Monday nights. Mm -hmm. and it was supposed to start at the afternoon and be finished before, uh, before the evening. And so, uh, in many cases, I wasn't able to make it back. That was uh, about a year and a half ago. He's been declared cancer-free mm -hmm. wow. and um, has had wow. no subsequent uh, issues. And so, other than that, I've been present at all of the account at all of the PNC meetings. Yeah. You definitely had a perfect evidence last year. Well, and I'll just add to that, Shani. In, in a I appreciate it because I, I know the effort that it takes to get up here also as you and I were talking just a few minutes ago the effort that it takes for a family to have to deal with a family member <coughs> who has cancer <coughs> um, but by the same token and it sounds cold but it's also important that we have a group of seven here and my feeling is you've demonstrated that as a result of not having to deal with the personal issues and mm -hmm. And for the, I appreciate it because, uh, and I don't think anybody here would argue with the fact that it takes a, a, a an additional effort to make sure that you're up there once a month on a on a Monday night. And uh, thanks for putting in the effort and showing that you can be there because, quite frankly, I knew there was the cancer issue, but didn't know the reasons why you weren't here on those times. And it's. It's very understandable, but the town still has to go forward and we still have to make our decisions. So being a business owner as you are, you totally understand that. When somebody's out, you still gotta make the decisions. So uh, thank you for continuing to be a part and wanting to be, continue to be a part because we need people who've got the 
who, who sat in the room and understand what's going on. Thank you for that. So, so Shani, there is this agenda is this the appointment is on the agenda. Um, like I said, there are uh, so we will deliberate and we'll make the decisions as well. Thanks again. Thank you, Shani. Thank you, Shani. So I think that's the only uh, person we are interviewing today. And Rachel is trying to that the two candidates uh, who applied will not be here. Uh, so can you help me with the math, uh, Saji? Uh, their terms are two-year terms, right? Right. So let's just start with the top. Anthony Ockham. No, no, I just want to talk about Shiny's terms. Okay. I only want to talk about it. Okay. She was appointed to this She was team. up and she was down, but her, time, her term expires. It's 2019. Her total term is going to expire in 23. But if we reappoint her now, she's she serving a two-year term and have to be reappointed for a single term. Right. So, so 2015 we appointed. Right. Every appointment is for two years. Right. So she got appointed to 2017. Right. So we are reappointed her again to 2017, so it became 2019. So if we choose to appoint her again, she goes up to 2021. So, okay. so the question we have, though, is I don't know that your term limit includes time as an alternate. So we that's basically that's what I'm getting at. Your oh. time would your time includes alternate as well, so I right? Have a note here. Rachel, oh, I just read it. Ask legal. Oh, I thought it's all it's all colored. Let me go pull the charter. Sure. Sure. Huh? I never thought about that. I'm going to the charter. Okay. Uh, so the time of alternate comes to the I don't know. That's, I think that's my question. I didn't know there was much of a difference between alternate and regular outline. Working right. So the other question we asked was in the meeting is if an, a member is not present, does the alternate get automatically upgraded to a voting member? Yes. Yes. The same for the VRA also or only for the end? <coughs> so there was a question. I thought there. that Demco said that the two were doing it differently. One right. said they were making it automatic, and the other said only if there's not a quorum. Is it right. I think uh, B of A, I think, was making it automatic where you can join. He said B of A. He was possible. <laughs> I think saying just make it automatic. That makes no difference. I think we should try to make it <laughs> consistent. Guidance, right? Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> State law, Board of Adjustments, only five people. So you couldn't decide at seven if they all show up. But one of them is on here. She's going to go look. Like if you still have it for her. I'm not finding it. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's in the charter. She thinks it's in an ordinance. She's going to I think it's in an ordinance. It's, it's not in the charter. Because I don't remember talking Versus about it. Versus oh, somebody who's not here. In the version of the charter I've got here, it's not in here. So I think it's important to get that if we make that decision for a term, what is her term? Because I don't think anybody knows. Because she definitely knows. Well, I don't mean that anybody knows. I mean, I'm just curious. for two years. You could appoint for two years. Yeah. Regardless of term limit, you could appoint. So two. if you appoint for two years, then that's 21-22. So let's say she wants to reapply at 22. Is she termed out at 23? And that's what I'm looking at. No, no, no. She's 29. That'd be 2021. Oh. Yeah. Uh, no, but she, she might be. It depends on the strategy because her. But she had been uh, on before this term. Yeah, so that's our other question. Does. We're just looking at any number. So it's, what is your other question? Regardless of your. Position. And you found that where it is? Um, it's ordinance five seventeen. Okay. Okay. Uh, it so is an ordinance. If they're on, it counts towards their term limit. Mm -hmm. So alternate does count. I would think it would apply alternate or not. I think so. So she was on how long before 15. she became an alternate? Well, she was on in fifteen, and she was made she an alternate in eighteen. So and three. Did we, did we right. move her down to alternate last year or year eighteen? Last year. So it's much year. Love her term. So she served us a three year as regular, then one year as alternate. Yeah, I couldn't remember it. So she's got four, four years, years left, which would be two terms. Right. Then back to alternate. It had to be last year because I wasn't here in 2017, Wayne. Didn't she start as an alternate and then go to full? I think she served one year as a unexpired term as an alternate, moved up to a full member, it. and then went back to an alternate. Okay, that's, that was my question. Okay, you work for it. Okay. So, Council, we have five applicants. Um, okay. <coughs> and we 
We interview Goldo, we interview Giordano, and we interview three of them. Correct. Gotcha. And the other two will not be available to the number one. Who's that, Demko or who else? Demko not. Uh, Demko is PNC's out, right? We right, yeah, interviewed James exactly. Golda and mm -hmm. Michael Giordano. And now we interviewed Ms. Daniel. Now, I'll go ahead and jump out here because I get myself plastered against the wall. Uh, <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm just real uncomfortable for a PNC member who owns so much property in the town. Yeah. And uh, since I was here during the negotiations for some of that property, I have a bad taste in my mouth from that. And uh, I just really have a problem with it. Uh, I participated with her on the UDO, and I know where her interests were on the UDO. And it was not as a participating member necessary. And I just really would hate to see that made a permanent member and somebody like a James Golder, for instance, have to sit as an alternate for two years or plus. Just my personal opinion. Well, it's kind of the same reason why we put Paul Bachnack where he's at. Because of his real estate interests, not at his position as a real estate person. But I, I tend to agree with you, Jim, because some of the things that are going to be coming up in the next, at least the next couple of years, They've got a tremendous interest in, and discounting the fact that well, I personally may not like her sitting there. She may have to recuse herself on too many of the votes that I think may be coming up, and that leaves you six. And if one has to recuse, and somebody else got to walk the room, or you end up with a, a potential three-three, and then the issue dies when it might should have really passed. If you have an alternate, you could step in. If she recruits herself, you have an alternate. Well, that's true. Right? I mean, so that, I was holding sure yeah, I that's true. Right? You do have the alternate that can step in, but does she does she leave for the night, or does she leave for just that item? You know, it, that, it, that, it, that gets to be... It would just be that item. That item. I, I would say just the item. Yeah. Attorney, so you can ask her. Yeah, it's just the item. That's what yeah. I thought. The one yeah. item that's... I have, I have yeah. seen Mr. Mc, Mr. McNeil recusing himself from the council when his house application was taken or so. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, when one person when a person owns one piece of property, two pieces of property, you know, I made it I clarified it when we talked about the horse pasture. Do I have to recuse myself? No, I do not. But I verified that a couple of times to make sure. But when somebody owns so many pieces of property in town and I've got a list of them. So and by the same token, recusal is only a real issue, recusal or not recusing, if it's a contentious 3-4 split or whatever the, if it's a 50-50 split and that recusal would have made a, a difference in what the outcome was of the vote. So you, we got to take that in. I'm not mind. necessarily worried about the recusal. I'm worried about making decisions that ultimately affect those other properties. Yeah, but if the rest of so the PN, if the rest of the PNZ goes along with it, you know, I, um, I hear what you're saying. I just it's not one person. It's not just one person making the decision. She could argue, but it's not just making the decision. But I still have the same comfort concerns that you've got. Count additional thoughts, discussions, and who. How do you want to go with it? So, <clears throat> you guys weren't here last time we talked about this. It was one of the reasons that it was delayed, and I had <clears throat> expressed passionately my concern uh, the same way. And I will admit that after having some time to really think about uh, the totality of our decision, um, not only on the individual who has put a lot of time in serving this town and Jim like you the the magnitude of some of the decisions that may come before the the Commission I've kind of come full circle on this and to some of your point mark on this is one vote it's one person that's the reason I asked her about what her thoughts were on 
if there was a conflict, she's verbally said she would recuse herself, and she already has said that she's done it a couple of times, so we have to take her on our word on that. She's already there. I mean, we do have some experience there. There are some benefits to this, to her being on the council, on the commission as well. And so I see that side as well. I, 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 you can ask me, Megan, was in here last time. I passionately spoke to what you just said. But I have come full circle. It's one vote. The rest of the commission has to agree. She said she would recuse. And then ultimately, it comes to the council. It's not a final decision. And so if we see that there is a problem, the council can only make the decision on what to do with, and I'm just talking about how I came to this, to my thought process on this. Ultimately, it comes back to the council to agree with what's happened. And so we, this council, or any council, has ultimate decision-making authority. If we see there's a problem, then that's where we can step in as elected officials and say, we feel like there is a conflict, or we feel like this is not right, or whatever. So I'm just saying I've come full circle on, on this appointment. Um, I have to admit, if it was brand new from the beginning, would I have agreed to do this? No. But it has happened. There's a lot of tenure here. There's a lot of expertise here I don't disagree with. We've, she's already proven that she's willing to recuse herself a couple of times. She said she would. So in totality of the big, of the big look at the big picture, uh, I think the risk is low. And that's where I've come to for myself. I think the risk is low. So for, so for me, it's a little bit different in that uh, I do know James Golder. He, too, is an attorney. He, too, is quite capable of, uh, of reading legal cases, and uh, he's proven himself on board BOA. Uh, and he, he, I, I said it last time. He, he, he showed that by <laughs> turning me down, uh, and, and the issue I brought to them as a friend. Um, and, and so you gain a lot, I gain a lot of respect for people when they stand up for what is supposed to be done and say, hey, look, this is the way it is. So you, you got two people that are attorneys, you got two people that serve the town, and, you, you know, and, and there's not. That's part of the reason I asked this before. What, is there a process? Is there an automatic? Because, yes, there is a lot of property involved. Uh, and, and so it comes down to really and truly, what is, what is our individual preference? And I don't mind saying that for me, uh, I have a huge respect for James Golder and what he did. So if I had the vote, that's, that would be my vote, uh, it would be for James Golder. And not because of anything else that we talked about necessarily. The property is a concern. I think, I think truly everybody has spoke that at some level. But if we're talking about serve the town, they both serve the town. We talk about attorneys, they're both attorneys. We talk about capable people, they're both capable. I have had one-on-one -on -one with James, and he, he shot me down, and I gained a lot of respect for him protecting our town uh, at, at that level. So, um, the good thing is you have a watch tonight. That's the good thing you have a watch tonight. Just, <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I, I, I don't, I, I just, just throw that on the table and tell you that's where I'm. I'm not trying to remove Shiny from anything, but we have an open spot, and, and I have a tremendous amount of respect for what James did. So. Um, yeah, we're asking people to represent our town clearly, professionally. Uh, there's no doubt in my mind he would do that. And so not having a whole bunch of other matrix or criteria to go by other than they serve the town, but they both serve the town. Then that's, that's my lean uh, at this point is, is toward, toward James. So I, I, I agree with everybody here. I think you know, that, that the arguments, the discussion. No, really, who do you agree with? <laughs> everybody has good points. Everybody has good points. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I have concerns because um, Shawnee has our land, and specifically, we will hopefully be moving forward with some type of downtown development, and we will need to be working with her and family and whatnot, you know. <clears throat> so that is, is a big concern. Um, at the same time, she has paid her dues, and, you know, she was permanent. She got booted for not showing up, and she has actually the perfect record. I think nobody else... In all the committees, I think has a perfect record. At least uh, not PNT. You know, she does, so she's she um, she's been there to she's earned. You know, she's trying to earn it, and she's doing a good job. You know, um, part of it is I, I think we should try to engage the residents that are wanting to be engaged, wanting to help out, and, and try to engage them and whatnot. And she definitely has worked really hard on the one complaint about her not showing up. You know, so she's definitely earned that. Um, but also, James has done a great job of serving the town. Um, now, I think he said he did not want to be an alternate, right? He'd only want to be a, a, 
uh, a full voting member. Um, part of it maybe is, you know, he's, he's definitely served his the time coming in today, but yeah. maybe it's still, maybe he needs to get by and they kind of wait. Um, you know, so so my, my worry was that there would be the conflicts, but, you know, um, I think there's, there's if you're, isn't it, it's criminal, isn't it, if you uh, have uh, conflicts? There's yes. Criminal, there's criminal. Yes, that, um, there are. Mm -hmm. However, the individual commissioner determines their conflict. Um, and I don't know what, again, we, I think we talked about this last time, mm -hmm. what perception might be, but it is the individual's responsibility to determine the conflict. And if they don't? If they don't, there are criminal penalties. And I think that was the question last time, is just knowing that if there is a, a conflict that sh she's you know, presenting it. So if, if there's evidence that she doesn't, then there's we Who have to take action. Who investigates that, Brenda? If, if we if she doesn't and we believe there is, who who's the com is somebody the town files the a complaint with the DA's office? Does the town become the complainant or the harmed no 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 person? the town doesn't become a complainant an individual complaint the harmed individual so the harmed some right. property owner would have to file a complaint right with the DA's office with the DA. But that can throw a big caveat in our moving forward until that issue is resolved, correct? Well, and the likelihood of somebody actually doing that is, I mean, you, now you have to go to a... Oh, I don't disagree. I, yeah, but, it, I mean, the black and white of it is if somebody contests it, then everything stops until that gets resolved. But, look, can I just clarify, if the council believes that there's, she hasn't recused herself and she should have... They that's an ethics violation too. I mean, they have the you can remove her. Yeah, you that. can remove can her remember. from yeah. Yeah. right. But there are no criminal right. But that would the you town wouldn't be the complainant in a criminal complaint. Right. right. But we could remove her. And again, the final decision on all these major cases comes to the council. I guess that's my point. It's the risk I think is low to the town as a whole. Mayor, what's your opinion? Let me ask you again before you answer the comments. Well, I, you know, I can see every side of this. And I guess, it, for me, it really comes down to transparency. And for those that I talk with that know what the, the, what the Daniels holdings are, they're going to be more inclined to say, you know, I'd rather have somebody like a, a Golder than to have a Daniels again because of what the potential, what the transparency is. You know, they know the Daniels own this stuff, and while she may be, she's one of seven votes. She can be persuasive at the same time. I, this this is a hard one. This is there's not an easy solution here because I can truly see both sides of it. I I would want to have James Golder involved. I can see where that would be a real asset for us. Also, see the benefits of having Shiny involved and understand that her one vote is only one of seven. How do you dis how do you disqualify one over the other that are both equally qualified? That one's hard. And with that, I give it to you. Okay, so yeah, that's fine. So, so, so let me come back. The big picture will come back. There's so five people applied. I think two people win. Did not attend the other thing. I'm going to discount them in my mind at least. Uh, the two people, three people showed up. Uh, what Ms. Danielle and Ms. Gordon has have experience. So with that, I'm going to discount Mr. Jerome in my mind at least. So we have two positions up on the other alternate, three appointment, and regular council. Um, um, if Gordon will not take an alternate position. I hate to lose it. From yeah. that perspective, I believe Ms. Daniel will continue as an alternate. She hasn't told otherwise. So I, I will, I'll be okay either way, but I, I hate to see, hate to lose order from the situation, from that position. I'm slightly leaning towards Golder as a regular than Ms. Daniel. That's, that's my position. But whoever makes the vote either way, I will support whoever makes the first vote. 
Because it's up to one yeah, to make that I'm decision. Sorry, so who's going to make the motion? Yeah, that's not going to happen. I'll call the motion to vote and make the decision. The good thing is we have time, right? We have nine, nine minutes and then a few more minutes to decide it. See, uh, let me ask this question, not just in relation to when somebody comes and applies. I mean, when I went through the process, I started as an alternate, and I thought that was the best place for me because I was able to learn yeah. the process. Right. So when somebody comes, and, and James is different, though, right. because so that's the only been, case, right? he has been in a commission, but when somebody comes to us and says that they don't want to serve as an alternate, especially on some different board, they've been on one board, they come to them, it's a different process. To me, that puts a little seed in my mind, too, about the level of commitment. Because I think that, I think that there is some recognition that, um, just like I came and watched many council meetings and was a part of many things before I came on council, but there's some learning process, I think, there's some benefit in the learning process I think that people miss yeah. in not experiencing the flow and the, how things work and you know, that learning process. At least in the past, if my memory serves me right, Council tried to appoint new people only to the alternate position, especially P and Z and sure. DOA. Those two the, out there, especially for the learning part. Really and that's important. part of the reason why the P and Z term got extended from six to eight. Yeah. Because the, and I forgot the gentleman who was, who was the gentleman in the Creekside. No, no, Glenwick, um, who was the P and Z chair for a while. You all know that he's a, a he's, Jeff Bedford. No, he's a builder. Bill, he's a builder, I think. He's Karen, Karen Hill. Was <coughs> Jim Cole? Mm -hmm. He lives in Glenwick. I don't remember the name before. You all know that he's very active. Mark was in Glenwick. So when, uh, when he left, there was a concern about lack of experience. So. It's Ricky Hoffman. Ricky Hoffman. Oh, Ricky Hoffman. Oh, I Ricky Hoffman. Ricky Hoffman. Oh, Ricky Hoffman. Oh, I remember Ricky. He was never chair, but he was a uh, <coughs> Um, Maybe time. he was a hall chairman on the BOA. Yeah. Anyway. Oh, yeah, he did go to BOA. Yeah. yeah. And um, was chair there. So here's, here's another question. If, if the motion and recommendation is for Shiny and James says, I don't want to be an alternate, which is fine. In fact, I know he's fine with that decision. He's, he's fine with whatever decision this, this town makes. Um, then then do we need to come back and go to another alternate? So the question discussion? is, does anybody think Giordano is a good candidate for PMC? He <coughs> so what? He's a regular member. Yeah, he also does not want to be a yeah. Okay. He does yeah. not, okay, well then, so that scratches potentially two people out. Right. But you have two more that have not interviewed Correct. that we could delay on appointing right. as an alternate. Right. So, so let me ask a different question. So we got... <coughs> Don Pine, John Pease, Sarah Mitchell, King Moose. I, I don't know their performance. Do you believe any of them should be? King's kind of struggles. Attendance, right? So he attendance missed one, one attendance. There's um, two of them that were struggling attendance wise. Anthony Ockerman <coughs> missed one, two, three meetings. Don Pine. Perfect attendance and realized that. Um, John Peace missed two, two sessions. King Moss missed only one. What about uh, Bradford? I'm sorry? Josh Bradford. Sarah Bradford. Sarah Bradford. Sarah Bradford. Not for appointment, but we can Josh always look at him and see. Josh Sandler. Three and one late? One, two, three, and missed one late. So he missed three, three and a half. Uh, maybe three. He was late for one. So that's another option. If 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 bump somebody to alternate and then keep both shiny and that's an option. That's an option. Well, I think that's if four. we're going to do anything, we we fill the permanent, what I call the permanent, the sitting, and then anything that's left over goes to alternate. So that way, the two new people that we haven't interviewed yet. It just it's so simple, you know. The, the question is different, right? So, do, well, we, do we keep anybody, yes. do we remove anybody from the regular two or two minutes of question? I understand that, but I'm just trying to get us over the hurdle of we can go ahead and fill all the sittings with who we feel need to go there. And if there's any alternates left, we fill them with the people that are left. So, 
so on and put, put some names to it. So help me understand that. Well, um, how does it look? Like? I mean, you got you got to fill Demco's hole. Okay. So and, who do you recommend in your in your in your scenario? Well, that goes back to the is it shiny or is it uh, James? James. Okay, one of them. Okay, and it. then so now you have, the, and that gets your your sitting filled. Okay. If I understand it correctly, mm -hmm. or do we still need to fill Ken? No, you should have just fill Ken. Ken's the only one that's available. Unless you move somebody yeah. down. But he's talking about regular only. The only regular spot is Ken's. Well, unless you want to reappoint somebody. Yeah. Oh, oh okay. yeah. Unless yeah. you don't reappoint right. somebody or move them, or move them down. Yeah. So you put either Shiny or James in Ken's spot, mm -hmm. and that okay. fills that. Okay. Right. And now you've got two alternate positions. Right? No, only no, one. one. Position. Do we only have one alternate now? If you push shiny. Oh, right, 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 right. If you push so you now with the two remaining candidates, you fill the other alternate position. That way. Right. Or right. you could move an existing member down to alternate and move her up. If okay, you Jane signs that up. What's that? I don't. I have an issue with. with Bounce and use these people. Oh, so right. you did it for the shiny. <laughs> <laughs> I think they've all done the job. But as King is the right. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. I know, but what? What's that for? Why would we do that? How many meetings total? The 12. Have we talked to him about it? I don't know. I'm just saying that. Who's three? I don't even remember. Yeah, I'm not three. You don't charge files. The charges are going to somebody. I'm not going to say that. That's what's going on. Yeah, I just don't hate to bounce somebody and then have to go to the next one. I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm with you. talking to him. Yeah, I'd hate to do that. I'd hate to. I mean, how we lose connection is we do things like that. Yeah. Then right. we lose connection exactly. real quick as a council. Okay. And so that's my thought. Right. Fair enough. Just just because any alternative that's all you know, trying to say what to do, right? I'm gonna make a motion, so all right. you can vote for or against my motion. You got it. Someone can meet meet me if you want. Huh? Someone can head off if you want, but that's fine. We Listen, we're missing one. We're missing three. So we can go to the three three tie. Oh, potentially, yeah. What does our charter say? Mm -hmm. No, the mayor votes. Right. Right. You'll have to continue talking until okay. you. We'll yeah. have to continue yeah. until we come up. Now, time is 6 58, so I'm going to attend the special. Whatever you do, it better be votable. We need a motion. Okay. Can I have guys, a motion guys. to can I motion to adjourn the special meeting? Second. Motion made by Mr. Finch, second by Clark to adjourn the special meeting for Monday, October 14th. Mm -hmm. See you shortly. Give me now what's the name of the uh, I'm sorry. Can you grab my camera out of Yes, and I meant to grab it, I'm sorry.